As we already know, each UFI variable consists of identifying information and attributes. Identifying information are vendor GUID and variable name. Those parameters are provided when using set variable and get variable UFI runtime functions. So vendor GUID is a, is a GUID which provides unique namespace for various vari variable names. In that way, uh, thanks to vendor GUID, uh, we can avoid collision between uh, the same variable names uh, which may be used in the system by various vendors. So uh, each vendor should use its own vendor GUID in, and in that way vendor creates its own namespace for the variable names. In that way there can be um, multiple variable names, the same variable names, but in different vendor GUID space. There are some architecturally defined variables uh, which have special vendor GUID. Uh, in EDK2 source code we can find it as a FE global variable GUID. Um, and we will discuss those uh, architecturally defined variables later in the course. But here we would like to introduce attributes, uh, which are responsible for indicating how the data variable should be stored and maintained by the system. Our attributes define when variable can be accessed and if given variable is volatile or non-volatile. Non we, will, we will dive in all mentioned uh, here attributes, uh, FE variable non-volatile, uh, boot service access, runtime service access, hardware error, record, and so on. Some of those names uh, uh, can be self-explanatory, but uh, some have more complex meaning and there are quite a lot of rules related how those can be used effect effectively. It is worth to note that in EDK2 source, we can find also uh, EFI variable read-only and that attribute is, is a non-standard non attribute and is just kept there for backward compatibility it was used in the past. But please note that all, all those attributes are implemented as a bit fields. So to get um, desired uh, behavior or desired capabilities, properties from the variable, uh, we will combine those bit fields uh, for a given variable and, um, and in that way we will set some properties. There are quite tricky rules uh, described in UFI spec regarding dealing with various UFI variables attributes. So for example, uh, if you set no attributes related to access, uh, this calls uh, set variable to delete our variable. If you don't know that behavior, uh, then you might be surprised with the result. Maybe all, all of that is not that important at this point, uh, but it is good to know that if something unexpected happens, tricky rules may maybe the reason uh, and we should check the spec for the detailed behavior. Uh, reading and understanding attribute rules, how those apply and, and understanding UFI spec with that regard is quite, quite fascinating exercise. It seems that spec writers complicated overall analysis and implementation. So for example, the FE variable hardware error record uh, va uh, like attribute related information cannot be found unless we know uh, that in other places in, in specification, uh, authors refer to it using abbreviation HR. Uh, also description of the way attributes work is interleaved in specification wall of text in, in kind of description prose form, uh, instead of using table like or like relation diagram with clear name of the attribute and clear de de description of behavior. Of course, it is easier to judge than to write good spec, but let's hope future version of the specification will improve uh, usability with that regard. Because of those various weird uh, relations and, and uh, tricky rules, uh, I, I think security researchers may find a lot of interesting mistakes and corner cases in uh, UFI variables usage. But let's dive into the attributes itself and start with explaining EFI variable non-volatile. So this sounds like a self-explanatory. If a variable got this attribute, it is treated as a non-volatile. It's stored in non-volatile memory instead of RAM and it will be preserved across reboots. And as we explained earlier, non-volatile storage may be limited. So uh, so use of those variables should be only for reasonable purpose. Next variable is EFI variable runtime access and partially description also applies to boot, ser uh, boot service access. Runtime access means uh, variable can be accessed by runtime services. Uh, what means uh, this access, this is access from operating system level. Uh, and to be pre precise, this is access after bootloader call it uh, exit boot services function. 
uh, which, which happens at the handoff from BDS to the operating system. So se setting runtime access attributes implies also setting a boot services access uh, attribute, uh, but the responsibility of doing that uh, is uh, delegated to the set variable function caller. And variables which do not have that attribute are not visible from the by the get variables uh, runtime services function when it is called from operating system. So it's like if we not set this uh, this runtime access, we cannot see in operating system uh, those those variables. And and we will just get from get variables f in not found, not found error. Um, we don't explain boot boot service access attribute. Uh, because it seems to be self-explanatory. It simply means that if a variable got put service access but don't have runtime access, it means that variable is only accessible accessible before exit boot services function was called. Next uh, attribute is FE variable hardware error record. So this variable use a very specific vendor GUID defined in the UFI spec. And meaning of the content of the variables is archi architecturally defined. Uh, those variables are typically stored in NVRAM area dedicated for recording errors. Uh, more information about that uh, about that hardware error record is in uh, Appendix P of UFI specification, and uh, it, it just describes how hardware error record persistence can be used uh, by operating system. Of course, uh, because those information stored in in this in variable using this uh, attribute uh, are implementation specific, uh, so to understand that content, you will probably need a specification from your BIOS vendor, uh, or maybe your uh, operating system vendor may have access to that specification, and in that way, uh, BIOS vendor and operating system vendor can um, use those uh, use those variables for some useful purpose. The last uh, variable is uh, FE variable authenticated write access. Uh, this variable is already deprecated, but uh, its purpose was to authenticate set variable caller when when creating new variables and when updating variables. Uh, there are newer attributes which are used for that, and we will discuss those uh, in more details during the discourse on next slides. Let's start with EFI variable time based authenticated write access. It, that attribute is uh, set when calling set variable function. Uh, the authentication shall use a special descriptor called EFI variable authentication two. Uh, what what means uh, that setting this time based authenticated write access attribute just requires some additional structure, some special structure to be filled uh, and and uh, provided to set variable so so the set variable call can succeed. There are various special variables which use this attribute, uh, which use uh, time-based authenticated write, ac write access. For example, there is uh, OS recovery family of variables used for, uh, for example, for warranty service reconfiguration, diagnostics, and other special operating system recovery behaviors. Uh, there are also secure boot policy variables, which must be created with time-based authenticated write access attribute set. And um, those secure related variables, and unfortunately, are out of scope of this lecture, uh, but we will discuss it in deep in other OST uh, courses. Uh, we will discuss use of authentication to descriptor, so the special structure which is provided to set variable. Um, later in, in this section. Uh, next, when um, EFI variable append write attribute is set while calling set variable, uh, then any provided data will be append to the existing variable. And unfortunately, uh, when we ca when we calling get variables and we look at attributes, uh, this append write will not be visible there because this is like just the attribute which is provided for uh, set variable to extend given variable. Use of the attribute has a very interesting corner cases. For example, if no reliable time source is available for providing timestamp uh, while using authentication to descriptor, we will talk about content of authentication to descriptor later, but uh, right now we have to know that it contains uh, a timestamp inside. So if there is a platform which has no ability to provide this reliable time source for that timestamp, 
um, implementation may decide to add a add variable despite the timestamp is not there when append uh, write attribute uh, is set. So this is like a rare case, rare special case. Uh, and in this situation, when the timestamp will be set to all zeros, um, it essentially is ignored uh, because we have append write uh, attribute. So this is like a corner case descri described in the specification. Up and write are very useful because they can create data databases, which for example are used in uh, UFI Secure Boot to store allowed and denied signatures at, and hashes. Use of such variable can be leveraged also by uh, already discussed hardware, hardware error record variables uh, to record multiple error entries in, in one variable. And finally, uh, the EFI variable enhanced authenticated access attribute. Uh, this attribute is very similar to already discussed time-based authenticated write access, but use different descriptor, uh, use descriptor called authentication tree. And this the handling this descriptor is way, way more complex than handling authentication two. Time-based authenticated write access attribute and enhanced authenticated access attribute are much mutually exclusive because those use different descriptors and like this uh, simply this cannot be uh, handled together. Variables with enhanced authenticated access attribute uh, return when calling uh, get variables return not only variable data but also metadata associated with that. And in that metadata we typically get information about the certificate uh, associated with the variable. And we will talk about that later when analyzing the authentication tree descriptor use. So as I said, like authentication, uh, enhanced authenticated access attribute is, is most complex to handle. And, uh, and this is most complex, uh, this, this define a most complex, complex UFI variable of all uh, variables defined in UFI spec. When we analyzed uh, source code of EDK2, we also realized that there is no sign of use of enhanced authenticated access variables. So that probably means this is used by uh, some proprietary implementations. Let's take a look at uh, FE variable authentication structures. So first authentication two, uh, we can see that it contains um, FE time timestamp and uh, win certificate UFI GUID out info. And timestamp is just uh, just time structure, FE time structure, uh, which uh, is expressed in GMT time zone. And out info is a structure containing uh, header, certificate type, and certificate data. Uh, and in case of, uh, of our authentication to descriptor, only PKCS7 certificates are, are supported. A uh, more complex structure is authentication tree, which we have here. Um, it uh, contains uh, various, various information, including version type, metadata size, and flags. Uh, so first of all, version uh, seems seem to be self-explanatory, uh, but, um, but as we can see, um, it was omitted in the authentication two, and that's probably why we see authentication tree descriptor. It just proves that uh, this field should be here from the beginning. Um, then we have type, um, and type uh, triggers uh, triggers adding secondary secondary descriptor right after the uh, authentication uh, tree descriptor, um, and uh, there are two potential types which are defined above. Uh, first is FE variable authentication tree times timestamp type uh, descriptor and uh, second is nonce type uh, nonce type the de descriptor uh, we will discuss how those are used uh, when anal when we will analyze authentication tree usage flow um, then uh, we have metadata size metadata size is everything uh, is the size uh, of everything except variables data and then we have um, uh, flags. Uh, those flags uh, uh, can cause additional verification steps. Uh, luckily, uh, luckily, uh, UFI specification right now define only one flag, uh, 
which is EFI variable enhanced out flag update cert, uh, which when indicated, uh, it, 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 it says there is, uh, there is uh, a new certificate pre present, uh, the structure of new certificate present right after uh, authentication tree descriptor. And this new certificate uh, would be set as an authority for 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 the for for the uh, variable to update the variable. Uh, of course, uh, this cannot happen arbitrarily, and in such case, there is need for one more structure, uh, which will contain signed signed data, uh, which will authorize update of that certificate, and that's uh, and that's EFI variable. Um, uh, authentication tree descriptor.